Good morning, and welcome to Shady Grove Sunday School Online. Uh, this morning we are talking about being sanctified, and that's in your Sunday School book on page 54. Um, book of Ecclesiastes talks about there not being anything new under the sun, and uh, sanctified means to be set apart, or maybe social distancing is a way to look at it. Um, I was listening to Robbie Zacharias yesterday, and he summed it up this way. He said, uh, God sent Jesus uh, not to make bad people good, but to make dead people live. And in that, uh, he sets us apart from the world. He sets us to be uh, who we need to be. And he helps us to understand how to go through all that. Uh, so we are looking at the first page there on page 54 and it says growing up what children's book was your favorite well the favorite uh, at first is going to be our prayer and our prayer is this dear lord there's been a there's been a great change in our lives and uh, the way we live and it's nothing that you haven't experienced before dear lord. Uh, it's nothing that uh, you haven't seen and nothing that you didn't expect. And it's all anybody can talk about anymore. And what a great change if Jesus Christ would be all we talk about. Really. What a great change if we could just hold on to you and not worry about the world and what it thinks. Dear Lord, we come to you on behalf of you and we come, dear Lord, to reach out to folks who can't be together this morning to help them to have peace in their lives and help them grow closer to you. Jesus Christ, Lord, precious name. Amen. Uh, on the second page there uh, of our lesson, page, page 55, it says, uh, it talks about a book that was this person's favorite, and it was The Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. And as you can see, I've been hungry a time or two. Uh, and the caterpillar, though, couldn't stop eating because it couldn't be satisfied. And it couldn't, um, it couldn't ever find exactly what it wanted to be satisfied. And on that page, uh, in a couple paragraphs, it says this, but one day everything changed. No longer crawled on the ground the caterpillar, nor did he feel intense hunger. Instead, he was fulfilled and had wings that couldn't enable him to fly. Then the author revealed that he was never created to remain a caterpillar. He was designed to be a beautiful butterfly. The writer says, I felt empathy for this caterpillar, and maybe you do too. Like this caterpillar, we were never designed to remain hungry and unfulfilled. Instead, we were designed to live in a relationship with God through the sacrifice of Christ. Instead, we were designed. We are designed to live set apart for the ways of a sinful world. We are set aside to become something great. We will turn over to page 56. Today, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we will in verse 9 as Paul continues to explain about the life of Christians and how they should and should not be. Uh, read the scripture first. Verses 9 through 11 says this, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves, with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, we start back in verse 9. It says, Know you not, note that the unrighteous that shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, we can only be presented to Christ, by Christ, to the Father as righteous, and he can only do that through his blood that has washed us. Um, it says, be not deceived. Now, some of you that are old enough might remember back to when Flip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. Well, the devil don't make you do anything. The devil influences you. The devil deceives you. That's his biggest weapon. Uh, and it goes on to have a laundry list of sins that uh, we could be or may have been uh, guilty of in the past. And 
It is not an all-inclusive list. Uh, there are many more sins that are listed here, but these are some of the, the, the big sins, quote-unquote. There's no big, no little sins. Uh, and, but he goes on to conclude this, and he says, And such were some of you. But if you have an all-inclusive list, it would be, and such were all of you. And as Christians, it could go on to say, but all of you are washed. But you are sanctified. And the sanctified word means to be set apart, as you'll see on down in, in, uh, on page 56. There's two bullet points there. Sanctified to set apart for God's special use. Therefore, including holy living, believers should live in a way that sets them apart from the ways of the impure. And the second one there is justified. It says it means to be put in right relation or right standing with God, which only God can make possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, he has, on the top of page 57, um, we see him continue to talk, Some such were some of you. And there's a couple of different bullet points there. Uh, one is um, things, it's things that we should know that we are as Christians. First, that we're washed, clean of our sin through faith in Christ. Not that you won't sin again, but he does that with his blood. We're sanctified. We're set apart by God and declared holy. By which we will, we, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. And third, we're justified. We're considered righteous in the sight of God. Now, can we do that on our own? No, there's no way to do that. Um, if you look again at verse 11, it says, and such were some of you. Um, we'll never make it out as uh, on our own as if we've never sinned. We've got to be presented as a treasure uh, in the future to the Father. Um, but we do that by the blood of Christ, and we do that, we make that by the drawing, comforting power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So this is another place we can see the Trinity. Now, if you'll turn on over to page 58, you'll see 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 17. And it goes like this. It says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will be brought under the power of him. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by his own power. Know ye not that our bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ, and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So we see some thoughts here on uh, what it means to be in the world but not of the world and to be joined to the world rather than God. Um, in verse 12, he's saying, Paul's saying here that all things are lawful unto him. And what he's talking about is all acceptable things are lawful for him to do. Um, but not all things are uh, things that we should do to excess. Uh, every morning when my grandson Mason gets up, he wants a hot dog or a cheeseburger, first thing. And his mother doesn't give him that. Uh, it's okay for him to have that sometimes, but not every meal and not as soon as he gets up in the morning. Um, so is things in life. Uh, there are things that, that you can do uh, that doing it once or doing it uh, not regularly may not be a sin. But when it consumes you, when that is what you're serving, or when you allow it to control you, is when you're coming under the power of that. Verse 13 says, Meats for the belly and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now, what that means is, when you pass away, uh, your body goes into the ground, and whatever you've done, whatever you've eaten, whatever you take into the body dies away with that. But you have an explanation throughout eternity. You have a reputation throughout eternity. And 
your body, if you allowed it to be away from God and allowed it to be only about what you took into the body that was not godly or not uh, important in God's sight, uh, then you have been fornicating with something else. And yes, fornication means something other than sin from time to time. Um, but it also means that the Lord and the Lord for the body is what we should be taking as much as we can in up. Uh, verse 14 says, God hath both raised up the Lord and will also take raise us up by his own power. Um, we can know that Christ was the first fruits of the dead. Uh, he was the first one to be resurrected. There was so much power when he was resurrected uh, that there was an earthquake, that people who had been dead walked around again, uh, that a curtain was torn, and it is symbolic, but a curtain was torn in the temple from the top to the bottom that couldn't have been torn by human hands. And not just because of the height, because of the thickness and because of what it was, and because now we have a clear path to the Father uh, through Jesus Christ. Verse 15 says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. When you think about members, you think about arms and legs, you think about hands and feet, eyes and ears and a mouth. All that can be used to do work. All that can be used to spread the gospel. All that can be used to reach people for Christ. But yet, if you take those things that are intended for God, if you're with a harlot or with anything else in the world, then it's not of God. And Paul is saying, God forbid that we would allow part of our lives to be part of the world in not that we're just living here, but that's what that member is used for. That's the most important thing we have where we try to share, which we can either serve God or mammon, the Bible says, we try to share our members with the world or with the things of the world that mean more to us to Christ. I've heard it said many times that um, sin is anything that comes between you and Christ. And so if we have something in the middle that means more or takes the place of what Christ could do, then we are making them the members of something else. And as Paul says, God forbid. Verse 16 says, What? Know you not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Well, when you're married, uh, when you have any kind of union, uh, but especially a marriage is the picture here, uh, you become one flesh. The Bible says that you'll leave uh, your father and mother, and, and cling to your spouse. Um, it says that uh, you'll become one flesh. So whenever you are attached to God, as God's child, as God's uh, member, as God's uh, outreach, as God's uh, minister, and all of us are ministers in one way or another, then we're one flesh. But if your union is not truly with Christ, then your union is harlotry. It is something that is taken away from Christ. It is something that is not what it should be for you to say that you are Christ's child, that you are a true Christian, what that word actually means and not what the world defines it as. Verse 17 says, But he that is joined under the body, I'm sorry, under the Lord, is one spirit. So when we are close to God, we have one spirit. Uh, the closer we are to him, the easier things are. How can you tell if you are exactly where you need to be with God? Well, you always have peace. You always know what to do. You always are able to walk and go to the places he would ask you to walk. You have no doubt. Can you do that all the time? No, because you're closer or farther away. But you can do that and know that you're on the right path because you know that that's what you need to do. And because that is underlying everything you actually do, is to try to reach that goal, to try to bring closer to Him, to try to not be away from Him. Now, I, I tell my story all the time, the old man, old woman story, about the old man and old woman going down the road, got the windows rolled down on a warm day like today's going to be, and uh, they're sitting with one arm on one window, and the, the old lady is sitting on it with her arm out the other window, 
and reach them to them, the breeze come by. They get behind a teenage couple in a pickup truck, and they're in each other's laps. And the old man and the old woman look over at each other, and the old woman says, Old man, why don't we do that anymore? And the old man said, I never move. And God never moves. And God never is farther away than we happen to be by us moving away from Him. Our life is about peaks and valleys. Our life is about closeness and farther away from Christ. And our life is so much better when we're closer to Him. That's the simpleness of this. And when we're closer to Him, we are one spirit. Now, if you'll look on the bottom of page 59, the writer here in the book says, Returning to the analogy of marriage, we recognize the weighty responsibility of living united to a spouse, but a deep joy also accompanies that commitment. A husband or wife's life does not look the same as it did before marriage. Spouses are to live for one another. A husband is set apart for his wife, and a wife is set apart for her husband. It's the same in our relationship with Christ. We're joined to Christ and set apart for his purposes. That is sanctification. And through the blood of Christ, through trying to live this life, is how we, in the end, become justified. On page 60, we have the last three verses. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 16, 18 through 20. It says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know you not? that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, flee fornication. We have a thing when people are really scared, when people are really um, sure that there's something they need to be away from. That's called fight or flight. Now, you may stay and try to fight that thing in your life, or you may try to put those things away out of your life. That's flight. That's the easiest thing. Um, the fight is also uh, something that we can do and we have to do every day when we're tempted. And it says here that every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Now, does that mean body physically, body actual? It could. Uh, but it could also mean that your testimony is afflicted, that your life is afflicted, that those watching you are afflicted because they've lost faith in you. It says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. That's the first, first part of verse 19. Um, your body is a temple because a temple is where the Holy Spirit lives, and he is in within your body. And you are to treat your body with respect for the creation of the new thing in you that God made and also for the life that you have and the thankfulness of that continued life. Um, because once we are born, we start to die. But once we are saved, we live. Just like Robbie said in the beginning. Which you have of God and you are not your own. You don't belong to yourself anymore. Um, Pastor Stephen talks all the time about God wanting the deed to the deed to the house, to your house, to your body, to your whole life. He also talks about um, not just having a rental agreement. And that's what this is talking about here. You don't own yourself. When you become a Christian, you are God's. And everything is his anyway. We are just fooling ourselves when we think otherwise. The last verse here says, um, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Um, salvation was a heavy, heavy cost for the sake. Salvation is free to all of us. Uh, I love um, we talk about these days about people hoarding things. And I love watching shows when they take something that's worth nothing and make it into something beautiful. Now, Jesus Christ was the first hoarder. He wants all of us. He wants left behind none of us. Uh, he's not running to Walmart to get toilet paper. He's running to you to try to get you to accept him and hold on to him. Uh, he has uh, the ability to take you as pitiful as you are in whatever situation you're in, as horrible a shape as you are, 
as bad as you think you are or worse, he has the ability to make you into something beautiful. Uh, lastly, I'm going to read here on page 61, the second and third uh, paragraphs. It says, as we rely on the indwelling Holy Spirit, let's also remember the price God paid to redeem us and bring us to himself. We value and take better care of things we pay a lot of money for. We typically give a lot of thought to what we purchase when it's costly. Many of us spend weeks, even months, selecting a house and securing a way to buy. On the other hand, we buy a snack at the convenience store without much thought. On an infinitely greater scale, God chose to purchase you and me, and it cost him greatly the death of his son. We are wise to take special care of what belongs to God. That includes our whole spirit, soul, and body. In submitting to Christ, we submit in both body and spirit. We are set apart, sanctified in Christ, and our bodies are no longer to be used as vessels for sin. Instead, our bodies are sorry, instead our bodies are to be vessels to glorify Christ. When we submit to Christ on a daily basis and let his Holy Spirit fill us, we are well on the road of sanctification. A sanctified life, live for Christ, can do nothing but glorify him. And I also wrote this last night. Salvation was so costly to our Savior, so free to all who accept him as who he is. While we have this brief life, we need to make it one, even in the time of social distancing, that honors him and preaches his love to all those we come in contact with, even at a distance. That's correct. Dear Lord, this distance is, is protect us, but it's also a time that we can surely get close to you. And we can surely protect ourselves by coming close to you. We can surely touch others with our spirit and the way we live our lives and show our love in a day and time when the only scripture must read is our lives. Dear Lord, help us to be clean, help us to be safe, patient, and thankful for all you are. Jesus Christ, Lord, precious name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. And come to Drive-In Church here in a little while.